any rates that I want, a little over 5,000. I think I was the 20th jockey to win 5,000 races in North American history for the sport. I'm 56 years old. I started out with 18 years old when I started. Tracks like Marlboro Racetrack, right. Garden State Park, DRC, Detroit Racecourse, Pocono Downs, Dover Downs, uh, and that's just to mention a few. There's many a racetrack that no longer exists. Exactly. And here I am. I'm beating Father Tom. Yeah. Hey, my name's Tony Black. I'm a jockey at Philadelphia Park. I've been riding 38 years, and I'm 56 years old. Uh, racing's been a part of... Uh, my family, in my family for quite a long time. I wrestled in high school and of course that was something that you did, it was uh, weight classes and you wrestled in your weight class. Well, being a jockey, this is my weight class. Uh, not everybody can do it, not everybody has the uh, physical ability or mental ability to do it. I've been blessed with, with both. Yeah, you wind up uh, connecting with a lot of people that know how to win races. Uh, you ride a lot of horses, a lot of races, and uh, you show up every day, and that's how you win 5,000. Winning 5,000 races, I possibly had to ride 33, 34,000 races to win 5,000. I've been on thousands and thousands and thousands of horses in the morning, exercising them, learning uh, what some of their peculiarities are. And I always think to myself, uh, riding 38 years, I've been on every kind of horse that God ever created when it comes to race horses. I came under old time trainers. You learned every aspect of the game. I walked horses, I rubbed horses. I was a groom for a couple years. I galloped horses. After three years of having experience with horses uh, and then learning how to gallop them and breeze them and work with every aspect, uh, in every aspect of taking care of the animal, eventually move on to being a good exercise boy, a good jockey, and, uh, and you build from there. It starts out as a learning experience and then it starts to be you capitalize on your experience and you learn how to get horses to give you the maximum uh, performance that they can give you. I truly believe that there are jockeys that have a uh, sixth sense. It's a feel they have for the animal and it's also the feel that they have for the animal and the animal has for them on their back. It's a communication without speaking. Um, and I think that's the natural jock, the jock that uh, didn't have to learn it. It's just a natural ability that someone gave them. Uh, I think there are jockeys, though, that have to go out there. They have to learn what's the right thing to do on their back and what's the wrong thing to do on their back. And you only do that by getting on many, many horses in the morning and developing uh, a rapport with the animal. You develop a way of communicating with the animal. Uh, it's, a, it's a sense, it's a feeling that you get when you're on the horse's back. It, it transmits through your body, through your legs, into your hands. The jockey's hand is very important, you know. Uh, you learn to, to handle these horses with a bit in their mouth. Sometimes it's made of rubber, leather, or steel. Uh, the, rain, the reins are what makes your hands have contact with the horse's mouth. You start learning how to finesse him how to BSing, 
how to get him to do what you want him to do without uh, uh, just muscling him. I think at times I myself have hard hands on a horse's mouth and I'll use a little bit too much muscle and not enough finesse and I have to catch myself and say, ah, settle down, stop pulling on him, give him his head, bring him back in. It's like a give and take. Let it out, reel it in. Let it out, reel it in. And then he gets the idea of what you want him to do. When you pull on these horses, you're talking about an 800 to 1,000 pound animal with 115 pounds on their back. There's no way in the world that my 115 pounds can out muscle an 800 pound animal. To some degree, that metal bit in their mouth or the leather bit or the rubber bit might assist you in restraining the horse. But your hands are what teaches you to use a little muscle, a little finesse, and they learn how to handle the horse and really communicate with him with that gentle touch, a little gentler and kinder touch. You're dealing with uh, an individual, an animal, that's been conditioned to do one thing, run. But you can't be inside him and feel what he feels that particular day. As we know with any athlete, human athlete or animal, it's, it's not always predictable. It's not always written in stone. You know, horses have good days, bad days, intermediate days, as jockeys do. There's not a lot of room for air out there. Races going three quarters of a mile or over in a minute and 12 seconds or less. So you don't have a lot of time to dwell on your decisions. A lot of them become instinct and, they, and you have to make them immediately and you have to adjust immediately. There's one thing that jockeys must be. They must be versatile in their thinking and they must not be one dimensional in their thinking. You have to adjust with what actually is unfolding in front of you. What you would like to happen doesn't always happen. And so that's why you have to be very versatile. Let me go down the list of injuries <laughs> that I can remember. Yeah, you know, when it comes to broken bones, I broke uh, my wrist twice, my arm once, my thumb once, my ankle uh, once, my foot twice. Uh, I broke my L1, my T6, seven, eight, and nine. I broke my collarbone. I broke my pelvis. I have a plate and 10 screws in my right shoulder. Um, ribs, I don't even think ribs count as break, broken bones anymore. I broke so many ribs. Fingers and toes don't count. In one particular spill, uh, I broke my thumb, my pelvis, and my L1 all in one day with a severe concussion and a torn uh, muscle that took uh, months to heal and I believe it was less than five months I was back in the saddle winning races. This is a sport I've been, uh, it's been a privilege to be in it. Not everybody can go to work every day and say, I'm going to work doing something that I like and I'm interacting with a big, beautiful animal uh, that I really respect. I think these animals are tremendous athletes and this horse racing uh, has given me the opportunity at 4'11 and 112 pounds, the opportunity to be something that I really want to be, a jockey and an athlete. It's a great sport. Uh, it's an exciting sport. Um, you, you can't ask to go to a better job on a daily basis. I'm 56 years old, probably at the end of my career. Been doing it since I was um, what, 19, just coming 19. Um, so uh, we definitely are at the end of the career, but I don't regret a moment um, that I've spent being a jockey and absolutely don't regret a broken bone for the price I paid to be a jockey.
after riding 38 years and you know you get near the end of your career, there's one thing that you have to replace, and that's the uh, thrill of victory and take and carry that over to a different part of horse racing. And I don't know how you do that. <laughs> What keeps 56-year-old guy in the game is the thrill of winning. Yes, sir. They say thrill of winning and the agony of defeat. Well, you have a lot of agony in this business. Did you know about Tony Black before you got here? Yeah, everybody's saying he's the, he's the man, he's the job, which he is. It's always a pleasure. <laughs>